Hi there and welcome back to my channel, The Wildwood Journal. I am a mother of three boys, homeschooling, and we're beginning our fourth year of homeschool. And I am journaling what we are using for our curriculum this year. And we are going with Horizons Math again because we really like it. Um, so in this video, I'm going to kind of give you a flip through of the grade one and grade five book that we are using. And I also have the teacher's guides, which uh, for kindergarten I didn't use because um, it's kindergarten math. It's learning numbers, shapes, number relations, things like that. Pretty basic. First grade is um, still, I mean, as an adult, I think I can teach first grade math very well without a teacher's guide, but I'm going to show you what I like about having the teacher's guide as a resource and how it can help serve you as you use the curriculum as well as for the fifth grade. So um, if you have any questions about Horizons math and things that aren't answered in this video, please leave a comment below and I will um, answer them to the best I can or point you in a direction that might give you an answer. So here we go. Okay, so this is the first grade teacher guide, and I'm going to do a quick flip through of um, the inside of this and then show you the things that at this point in the very beginning of our year, I can see myself really um, having this as, as a help in just really guiding through um, the way we approach teaching math um, from an early age. So um, inside... <clears throat> Obviously, you have your contents and what you'll find in the book. Um, there's a lot of great information that before you start kind of explains the curriculum and its approach. Um, this is kind of a traditional way of teaching math. Um, it's also a um, spiral concept as opposed to a mastery. So it introduces a new concept and then you work through it and then there are other concepts that you're working on at the same time, and then it might go away for a little bit, but then it will come right back around and we'll hit it again. So there's a lot of review built into the way the curriculum works throughout the year, um, which has been very helpful <clears throat> to our oldest. And then um, I can see it being very beneficial to our middle son who is doing the first grade as well. So um Lots of great ideas and helps within that first section. Then it goes into um, readiness kind of evaluations. Um, it explains why that would be important and how it could help you as far as getting ready to begin this curriculum. Um, and then the score sheets and exercises to follow. And then we get into the... Uh, preparing a lesson okay so it breaks it down for you and talks about there are tests built into the workbooks um, how concepts are taught objectives any materials where you'll find them and then there's um, the activities answers are in the back of this book um, if you want to use those for grading and then um, the scope and sequence so this could be very helpful for you to look at like if you're wanting to compare this to the way your state teaches math at this age, you could pull that up on your state's website um, and it will give you uh, the scope and sequence and concepts that are taught at first grade through the public school. And you can kind of compare and evaluate. Um, what's what, what I've seen to notice as far as our state goes is the same things are taught, but maybe not in the same order, especially as you get into higher level maths. And so while my son's um, public school peers may be working on a concept at school that he hasn't started yet, um, he'll he'll get into that, you know, further into the year or vice versa. He'll be working on a concept that his peers have not started yet. So, um, but the same things are taught just maybe in a, a little bit different order. Um, a list of manipulatives that you might need or will need for teaching the lesson and which lessons they're used in. 
um, which is also a good help for at the beginning of the year. You can just kind of make sure that you have all these things on hand. And if not, you may need to go ahead and get those. Um, very comprehensive list. And then the mathematic worksheets, um, which are at the back of the book. And then you can make as many copies of as you need to um, throughout the year or for multiple students. If you have, you know, twins or kids, if you have kids in the same grade or same level of math. Um, and then this is a great um, graph to show you when the concepts are introduced, initially practiced, brought back, there's a break from it, then a review, and then a secondary review. And um, typically after that, it should be mastered. So um, yeah, and then we get into the lessons. And what I really like about this is that it just kind of breaks down um, how to help you make the lesson very interactive. So if you got just the workbook, you would think, well, this is very like kind of busy work driven and um, it's just, I mean, they're great. They're great worksheets. There's lots of colors. They're very fun and, and uh, visually appealing. But if that's all you did, then, you know, that would be kind of like busy work and leave a lot to uh, feel like a lot is missing. But if you get the teacher's manual, it kind of gives you um, tips and, and ways to engage the student in a hands-on way, um, kind of creating some different ways to approach a problem or interact with it. And then it also sparks creativity in you as the teacher. So you know your student well and things that help them learn. So maybe you need um, some beans for counters and you think, well, that, those are just going to get thrown everywhere. So let's make this fun. Let's make it um, Oreo math and we'll use cookies today and we'll, um, you know, count the cookies and eat them or use them to maneuver around a number a number page, um, number chart, you know, whatever. It'll just kind of spark creativity for you. And then um, it also gives these activities for each section. So if you look at the workbook, well, here, let's look at lesson five together, which is the one that we're getting ready to do tomorrow um, that I need to kind of get myself prepared for. So we're going to be introducing or covering um, the tens place and ones place place values. Okay. Um, we're also going to be counting by tens and um, the number that comes between by ones and counting by ones. Okay. So those are the concepts that we're going to be working on. Um, objectives, the student shall be able to count by tens to 100. So we'll practice our skip counting um, to correctly write the digit in the tens place and ones place and correctly write the missing numbers, counting by tens, and we'll be able to correctly write the missing number between two given numbers, okay. Um, materials, I need my number chart. I need place value materials. So these can be things that you can print off of um, Pinterest. There I've seen like using um, place value town to teach, so you have like a house and only nine people can fit in this house and then when there's 10 you have to move over you know to the next house and so on and so forth um, it gives you a tip uh, an idea here that you can use um, one inch or two inch cardboard squares to represent the ones place and color them then the tens place you can then like make a grid of 10 squares for your tens place and color them a different color and then you can kind of maneuver along those for counting you can also use counting sticks or blocks or colored stickers um, and then it just gives you each activity so um, for the first activity we're going to count aloud together by tens to a hundred and we can use the number chart to create that visual association with what we are saying and then we can count out loud by ones to 100 doing the same thing using the number chart um, then before student activity one which is this section here then um, we're going to discuss the number of places in a single digit number such as four and then um, using the number chart we're going to ask what the largest number is that takes only one place so nine is as big as we can go before we have to add the tens place to our number then we discuss number 10 and so on um, and this is just giving our student a visual 
to go with learning the ones place and the tens place and what that means with the written number and then also a visual association with it. And then it just goes on the same things, activity two, activity three, activity four, and activity five and gives you um, ways to interact with those um, concepts with your students. So um, apart from having the, the teacher guide, you're you know on your own for creativity and coming up with the best ways to teach the concepts to your student. With the teacher activity guide, you have some jumping off points that you can use to make it open and go and no prep or um, to kind of spur your own creativity and as you um, find your feet and get into get really get into being a, a home educator for your family. So yep, and then um, each lesson just goes on. Then the rest of the book after the lessons, and there's usually two workbooks that go with each academic year. So this is just book one for first grade, and then there's a book two. Um, but then there are answer keys to your worksheets or your student activity sheets that are in the workbook. And then you have the, the reproducible worksheets. So if your student needs extra practice, um, with a lesson or a concept, you can come back here and um, make copies of these concept pages, these worksheets, and have them for your student to do. And there's several, several, several. And then the answer key to the worksheets as well. So a very helpful resource. Um, I purchased mine used from a local used curriculum store, which was helpful, and I encourage you to do the same and when you're done like fully done with curriculum retain some of they retain their value especially the non consumables like teacher guides you know by all means recoup some of your investment as a home educator and um, consign them or sell them and that will help uh, your family out as far as like um, keeping this to not be a strain on your family's budget especially if you're working or homeschooling from a single income family like we do so um, that's a look at the first grade math okay so here's a look inside the fifth grade horizons math teacher guide and um, at least book one of the workbooks I haven't bought the second workbooks yet because I have time and they're easy to access um, uh, we have a, a local store that carries the workbooks and, of course, always online shopping available as well. So um, the teacher's guide is set up quite similarly to the first grade teacher's guide that we flipped through. So you have your table of contents and introduction and um, lots of, you know, helpful information. Just kind of uh, get yourself familiar with the curriculum and what its goal is and design and, and where who, um, how it's developed, or the development of it, sorry. Um, there's also readiness evaluation incorporated into the workbook or the teacher's book. So you can make sure and see um, that your student is ready for the curriculum, but also, you know, if there's a concept that maybe they haven't mastered, you know, okay, that's something that we might be spending a little more time on this year, um, or um, we'll start at, you know, we'll start there and revisit that before we dive into the um, the curriculum. You just kind of gauge, is it because they really don't understand it or they just need some time to refresh the concept um, in their mind. So, um, and then same, preparing a lesson, getting organized, the tests when they, when they happen and how they're kind of structured throughout the curriculum. Um, and then the other things that you'll find in teaching the lessons and then throughout the book. So, um, again, here's your scope and sequence. Same thing if you want to compare it to your state's um, public school, what they teach in fifth grade. So you can kind of compare and contrast, see what's different, maybe um, the order that things are taught, so on and so forth. Just if you're curious or for your own peace of mind um, that you are kind of staying um, at and above or on track with your child's um, academic peers um, and then uh, where to use the mathematic worksheets 
when concepts show up, what lessons they appear in. Um, and then another, gra another visual to show you when the concepts are introduced, practiced, practiced again, there's a break from it, then the initial review and secondary review. And then we get into the lessons. And with this being fifth grade math, it is a little more independent driven. So your child has more ownership over the lesson and um, working through their book um, a little more independently and not with and not with you sitting right there at their shoulder like much in the kindergarten and first grade, second grade, maybe even third grade math. Last year was kind of really when um, our son kind of took ownership of, of these lessons and whatnot. So um, what I do is I, well, so let's do the same thing. We're going to be doing lesson five tomorrow. And so with most curriculums, the first few lessons a lot are review and um, just kind of bringing back in those things that they should know and refreshing their, their mind um, about them. Each lesson has one of these boxes that starts the lesson with and um, hits on the key concept for the, for the lesson that day. So we're going to be working on missing add-ins. We're going to be solving for X, right? Um, yesterday we were reviewing the division properties. So the box covered the division properties and gave an example. So for the lesson, we will review that together. We'll go over um, you know, the sample problem and kind of touch on the order of operations, things like that. And then I'll turn him loose to finish the lesson on his own. He will work through each section. Um, if he has a question, he'll come and ask me or needs, uh, you know, a little jump start. We'll, we'll do that. Otherwise, then when he's finished, I grade it. And, um, if there's any things that he, anything he missed where, I could tell it was um, if it was a you know just a simple mistake going too fast, or if it was a I don't quite understand the concept of the problem. You know, then we'll go back and we'll we'll review that and work through them together. So um, he will work through the like this one. Um, we need to finish. Did he miss? I think he just, yeah, I think that's supposed to be an M, not hath is pro. So we'll have to go through and um, clarify on this section here. Anyways, um, so yeah, he'll work through that and then I'll grade it and then we will move on from there. So um, I also do really like how each of the day's lessons has a quote or scripture that's just kind of encouraging for the day. And then... Um, after a certain section of lessons, so our first test is going to be after lesson 10, and they're just worked right into the student workbooks. It gives you the uh, points available for the test and what lessons it's covering. Focusing, so yeah, lessons one through five um, are what he'll be tested on, and then I grade that, and then we go into right into that next lesson. We don't make the test um, a separate day of math. We just build that into our math time for that day um, and do that lesson. So, um, yeah, and then also, you know, the, as you go through the book, you'll see sections, you know, with it being a spiral curriculum, there may be a concept that your student has mastered or um, doesn't need a whole lot of work on. So use your judgment, you know. I may, we may get to a, a section here um, you know, or later down in the year where I'll say, okay, you know, do the first two or three problems. And if you get those right and don't miss any steps, then you don't have to finish the rest of that section. Um, or I'll say, do, you know, do the odd, odd number sections or the even numbers, you know, problems and just kind of take out some of that, um, in those concepts that I know he, he really does get. So, um, that's, again, part of making the curriculum a tool for you, not you being slave to the curriculum and making sure that you do every single page of every single lesson. And if you don't finish it by the end of the year, that you're failing your student, you know, just 
follow along and if they're getting great grades on the tests and have no problem doing the work, then you're doing just fine. Um, then in the rest of the book, there are the um, answer keys for the workbook that they're using. And then there are the test answer keys. Oh wait, there's worksheets. Did I skip the test answer keys? Maybe. No, nope, here we go. Test answer keys. So it makes for quick grading, especially in the higher level maths. And then um, the worksheets where you can print off or make copies of things that your student may need extra practice. And then the worksheet answer key at the very back of the book. So again, for just quick, easy grading um, of those practice sheets. So, yep, I highly recommend getting the teacher's guides to go with your students' math books. Um, can you teach it apart from them? Absolutely. But um, they definitely save a lot of guesswork in what do you need, how should you help your student um, get through the lesson and, and introduce the concepts and work through them. So highly recommend it. Also, I want to say um, if you are a new homeschooler, I purchase a lot of my non-consumables used. And part of that is because one, it helps save our family budget when we are a single income family homeschooling. But then also is these materials retain a lot of their value. So don't feel um, like you have to buy everything brand new. Get the used version and um, save some money at the beginning, but then also know that you can, as long as you're not like marking it up and making tons of notes, you can turn around and consign this at a, a resale shop or resell it in a Facebook group and recoup some of your investment in it as well. Um, just a homeschool family tip right there for you. So if you have any questions about the math curriculum and things that I didn't answer for you, leave them in the comments below. And thanks for watching.